Okay, who's online? Let me know if you guys can hear me now. Let's just give it a minute or two for everyone to get back, okay? Sorry guys, it's not lockdown or load shedding, it's the internet. Okay, I see the guys slowly coming back. Okay, let's slowly get going. Okay, so we touched on we touched on kit. So just your basic sort of diving kit, uh, one ones, one twos, ninety rollers. Now look, let's look at uh, when to target snook. So we're quite lucky in KZN, like I said, they they around pretty much year round. There are better seasons though. So now, sort of April May is is historically is one of our better seasons for snook. Um, especially around Durban area, Durban North, uh, North Coast. So now, unfortunately, we're in lockdown, but it seems to be that this time of year is is, is one of your better times to target snook. But they are around most of the time. Okay, if you look in the right places, you'll find snook. So when you're also going to consider um, your tides, it's definitely better to target snook around a, a high tide rather than a low tide. Um, most of that's got to do with where you are going to be diving for them. Most of the diving for snook is going to be a little bit shallower, shallower than 10 meters. If you do that sort of diving on low tide, you really, you really need a flat sea because there's going to be a lot of surge. So um, high tide, early mornings is going to be prime time for snook. Um, snook on the low tides tend to go a little bit further out onto the deeper reefs. On the high tides, they'll um, they'll come much closer, right up to backline. A lot of the guys that are spin fishing off the beach will catch them on a on a high tide on a flat sea because they can get to them out behind the waves. So your early morning high tides, that's the time to target snook. Um, most of the time, I'd like to be swimming out as soon as I can see, um, or as soon as I can see the bottom. I'll be swimming out, getting into position. And a lot of times, the first few shoals of snook will swim under you pretty much before you can see them properly. So pretty much before you can ethically take a shot at that snook, they'll be swimming underneath you. So you really want to be there before that happens. Um, a snook, they can be quite skittish. So what you don't want to be doing is you're, you don't want to be trying to dive bomb them, that sort of stuff. So as, if you can be on your spot, ready to be on the bottom, um, doing your sort of ryth rhythmic top to top to bottom sort of diving, um, you stand a lot better chance than getting there a little bit later. Often you'll get to your spot a little bit late once you've slept in or something like that, and there'll be a guy that out there already, and he'll, he'll have three or four snook on his float. So the early bird definitely catches the worm when it comes to, to snook. They'll also, they tend to come through in, in sort of in waves. So once you see a snook or two, it's, it's normally the sort of precursor to quite a big sort of push of snook coming through if they're in the area. So if you've seen a snook, it's too far to take a shot at, don't shoot. Most of the time, it's a sort of precursor to that, the rest of the shoal pushing through. So you see that fish, what I would do is start breathing up, calming your nerves down, get down to the bottom and start looking up. Most of the time, you'll start seeing, especially if there's shoals of snook in the area, you'll start seeing the shoals coming past you. And then at your leisure, you can pick out a good fish, put a good shot into it. It's far better than chasing that one fish that you've seen 
um, taking a flyer. What you might then do is you might scare the, the sort of majority of the shoal out to swim a little bit further, further out, okay? So, yeah, early mornings, um, you're looking mostly on sort of points. Points are very good for snook. Um, if you get long beaches, uh, you're looking for sort of rocky outcrops where the snook will be swimming past. Anywhere where there will be a bit of a rip being formed. Snook loves, um, a snook loves a rip. If you can find a rip current pulling water out from the inshore sort of um, shore break area, pulling that water out to backline, snook will feed on the edge of that rip. So if you can be diving just on the edge of that rip where the water is not dirty, most of the time you'll see the snook coming in on, on that rip. So the tactic for that sort of situation is you want to find a good holding spot, a good spot where you can ambush that fish, whether it be next to a rock, um, in the sort of surge on the bottom. Uh, you want to be diving down onto the floor, looking up at silhouettes. If it's dirty, if it's clean, you want to be trying to hide yourself as best as possible. So most of the time, you can get in right into the reef that hides yourself uh, really nicely from a snook. Um, they tend to sort of scan the water sort of above them. They don't really look down too much. So my tactic for snook is most of the time to be on the bottom as much as possible. So my normal sort of dive time is 1.45-ish, uh, two minutes if I'm diving shallow and I'm pushing it. So I'm not going to be lying on the floor for two minutes. I'll make that dive one minute 30 so I can spend less time on the surface, more time on the bottom um, for less surface recovery time. Because remember, your sort of general recovery time is twice the amount of, um, of dive time. So if you've done a one minute 30 dive, you need to be on the surface for about three minutes. So if I cut my dive shorter, it means I can spend more time on the bottom, less time on the surface. Okay. So me personally, um, I believe you've got the most chance of shoot, shooting snook by lying on the, on the bottom. Okay. A lot of guys dive with flashes and they'll swim around with a flasher all day long, hoping that a snook's going to come to that flasher and then they'll dive bomb and, and take a shot. You can get fish like that. They can, they do come to flashes. But it's far more effective, especially in the shallows, if you're diving on a point um, on the edges of the rips, to be lying on the bottom trying to ambush them. Okay, you can get a lot closer, they're a lot more relaxed. You can put better shots in than trying to dive on them from the top. A snook is a very sort of snaky fish. It swims the big S motion. If you're trying to shoot a fish from the surface, from the top, it's very difficult to time your shot to hit that fish while it's doing this, these sort of snaking motions. So you either want to be at the very least at the same level of that snook, or you're going to be shooting from the bottom up to give yourself the most sort of target for, for hitting that snook in the, in, the, in, the, in the proper area. Remember, a snook is a very, very soft fish. So you want to be making sure of your shots, and you also don't want to be pulling very hard. So if you're going to be taking flies into snook, you're going to be losing a lot of fish. And even worse than losing that fish is the fact that that fish is going to die. We don't want to be killing fish unnecessarily. Remember, we're very ethical. We only take what we can eat. So we don't want to be taking shots at fish that we know is going to kill that fish. We're not going to take it home. Okay. So what I always tell my crew on my boat is if you don't have a good shot, you don't fire your, your spear gun. Okay. That fish most of the time will make a turn. It will come back around. When it comes back around, you can get another crack at it. And that the same goes for Kuda. The same goes for Wahoo. If you don't have a good shot, a high percentage, 80% plus shots, you don't pull the trigger. Okay. So, yeah. Like we covered now, we've covered gear. We've covered where to find them. The sort of rocky, uh, rocky points, outcrops, uh, rip areas. What we haven't covered is the sort of deeper diving for stock. Later in the day and also early in the morning on the low tides, you can find snook a little bit further out, a little bit deeper. So you'll want a, a patch of reef a little bit further offshore. Um, that sort of 10 to 15 meter line is quite good. Um, that's, that's a good place to start looking for them. Personally, I don't like looking for snook in the mornings on the low tide um, in the shallows. Like I said, there's a lot of surge, and I don't feel that they swim shallow in the mornings um, on the low tides. They tend to swim a little bit further out. They might be on the same point. They might be on the same rocky outcrop you'd be diving in the shallows, but they might be in a slightly deeper line, not swimming on the back line, okay? The best way for a beginner to find and to shoot snook is to dive for crayfish. So you start at your back line, you start picking crays, you start swimming out to your deeper reef, you pick crays. If you see a snook, 
90% of the time, that's going to be the line that you're going to get them on that day. They're very line specific. So if you get the snook that day on a, um, let's call it a 10 meter line, spend your time on the 10 meter line because you're likely to see more fish on that line. Uh, it doesn't make sense to shoot a snook on the 50 meter line and then you go and sit in the shallows because that's where snook are supposed to swim. Um, that can be very line specific. Okay, so find the line for the snook for that, for that day. Um, Ryan, current wise, I don't really think it matters um, what current to shoot snook in. Uh, tide for me is more important when it comes to snook. Most of the time, though, the only thing you need to, to bear in mind with current is snook tend to swim like most game fish into the current. So what you want to be doing is you want to be facing, I know it's difficult if the current's strong, but you want to be facing down current looking for the fish coming up the current, if that makes sense. So if you've got a point jutting out to sea, you need to decide which way you're going to face. Um, if you know your point well, you know your spot well, you know in the morning which side the snook is going to come from, in the afternoon which side the snook is going to come from. But if you don't know a spot, the best thing to do is you face directly out to sea and you look left and right. And then you just work out very quickly which direction those snook are swimming in the morning. They'll, if you see them swimming south-north, most of the time, the whole the rest of the morning, they'll be swimming south north. Unless they're feeding, then they can come in from all angles. If they're feeding, all bets are off. You can get them low tide, high tide, doesn't matter. Especially if we get the bait pools. Um, if you get bait pools, you can shoot snook the whole day, any tide, any current. Okay, but if you don't have bait pools, you're specifically looking for them early in the morning. I would face straight out to sea on that point, find yourself a nice spot where you're hidden. And you'll try and work out if the snook is swimming from the south or if they're swimming from the north. Once you've worked that out, then you can face 45 degrees either facing northeast or facing sort of southeast. And that should put you in line to see most snook coming inshore and sort of um, offshore of you. Okay. Do you need reels? Um, I dive, all of my guns have reels. You don't need a reel, you can dive with a float. The only thing with the float is if you're diving shallow, um, especially if the snook is swimming shallow your float's gonna be washing into the surf zone. So what you can do then is to either hold the float line so it's pretty tight above you if you're lying on the bottom um, and let the rest of the line out behind you so that the float doesn't get sort of washed into the surf zone or you can uh, tie your float line shorter so that it's right above you. Um, by that, by doing that, then you're not gonna have the, the gun being pulled out from, from, from your hands, okay? But 90% of the time, or 100% of the time really for me, I'll use a reef hook and I'll swim out to wherever, wherever, wherever I'm diving, put my reef hook into the reef and I'll swim around with my real gun. That gives me a bit more freedom to find the line that the snook are swimming on that day. I also believe it makes me a bit more stealthy when the snook are full of shit. They, I believe they see that float line, especially if it's a bright orange float line, and they tend to go a little bit offshore or inshore of you. So when they're being fussy like that, I like to be completely untethered, lying on the bottom with nothing attached to me. It also makes me a bit more free to chase fish if I have to chase fish. And the most important thing for me with the reef hook is it gives me um, a sort of a, um, a point to triangulate. So if I've come up, I've seen a snook, I, was, I didn't manage to get a shot into it. If I come up and I look, up, look back to my float, I can sort of pinpoint exactly how deep, how far offshore I was from that float. So I can make sure I hit that same line again the next down. Because remember, a lot of our diving for snook is going to be um, it, it's going to be in dirty water, two, three, four meters. You most of the time you can't see the bottom on a five, six meter dive. So by using your float that you've been reef hooked, that, that you've reef hooked, you can triangulate your position quite accurately. Make sure you hit the same spots again to make yourself um, to give yourself a better chance of that snook coming past you again. Okay, Shauno, um, recommendations about pressure change. Personally, for me, like there's a lot of theories about this. I've tested them all. I've, a lot of them have worked. A lot of them have proven themselves bullshit. For me personally, I shoot a lot more fish um, just before a northeast or sort of the first day of a northeast. Um, stock for me in the southwest, I haven't really done well. Um, unless you up in Zululand, Cape Vidal, you can shoot snook in the southwest all day long. But personally, for shore diving in sort of local north coast, south coast, um, the southwest there hasn't been very productive for me, especially in the shallows. You sort of want the, the sort of day before the west hits. 
So if the westerly is going to hit on the Thursday, you want to be in the water that, that Wednesday morning. Um, the sort of drop in pressure just before the westerly hits, never really done well with stock, to be completely honest. Um, a lot of time I've wasted petrol and time looking for them because I smashed them in the morning before and then that next morning, just before the west hits that afternoon, it's dead, stone dead. So in my opinion, you don't, a big pressure drop is not great, unless you can catch it the day before, if that answers your question. Ryan, do I use a bungee line? Personally, me, I don't use a bungee line because I like to hook up my reef hook and dive just with my reel. And um, I definitely don't use it on my gun. Um, I tie my reel line straight onto my, onto my shooting line. If you're gonna be using a bungee, remember what we spoke about in the previous talk, um, it doesn't make sense putting that bungee on your float. Uh, that bungee needs to be on the float line going to your gun. Because especially with a snook that's a soft fish, you want um, that bungee to do the work for you as soon as you put your spear into that fish. Okay, so if you put your spear into the snook and you let go of your gun and you don't want your float to pull the spear out, you want the bungee closest as possible to that spear to, to take the pressure as soon as possible. It doesn't help if it's on the float because the pressure from the float line running through the water is going to put pressure on that fish way before your bungee has any sort of effect. Um, so that's my opinion on bungees. Um, I would keep it short, three meters max on a shore dive. If you're going to be diving off a boat and you're using a float line, you can maybe use a slightly longer bungee, but if you're keeping it close to your gun, three meters is hundreds. Otherwise, a, a meter long bungee from your, your gun to your, to your float is normally fine. Um, one of the reasons I use a real gun, because I can keep the, the drag on free spool um, or just, just off free spool. And when I put the spear into the snook, I let everything go, put it into free spool. The first run is when he's going to tear most, do most of the tearing. So if you can take as much pressure off as possible, uh, you've got much better chance of landing that fish. So put that reel into free spool, let him run as far as he wants in that first run, and then you can start putting a little bit more pressure. But most of the time, it's, it's sort of fingertip stuff. Um, you don't want to be pulling a snook hard. There's nothing better than spending two hours waiting for the shoals to come past. And then the first shoal that comes past, you put a spear into a fish and you pull the spear out. It's a waste of a fish. Uh, it's a waste of your time as well. So play them nice and gently. They're soft fish. That's why they're so delicious to eat. Um, shoot them in the right place. Uh, a lot of guys ask me, where's the best place to shoot? Hey, Howie, how are you going? A lot of guys ask me, where's the best place to shoot a snook? Um, best place is between the dorsal and the anal fin. That's it's the toughest there in terms of uh, skin sinew. It's also the biggest target because a lot of the time, remember, you're going to be diving in poor vis. Your shots aren't going to be as good as if you can see properly. So between those two fins, you've got the biggest sort of area to miss up or down and left and right. So if you're aiming for the middle between those, the dorsal and the anal fin, you've got a big margin of area to, to of margin of error to, to miss. And if you do miss left, right, up, down, it's quite tough in that area, so you shouldn't be tearing the fish out. Um, I've got cocky before when the snook are stupid, trying to switch them off and to take kill shots. It never really ends well, especially if you shoot them further forward towards their head. They're very soft there, and you can pull the fish, the, they pull the spear out of the fish very, very easily. Okay, yeah, Ryan, in the face. In the face is fine if you if you're willing to lose a couple of fish, but I wouldn't advise it. Stick it between the between the two fins, you've got a much better chance of landing it. The same thing for Kuda, very, very true for Kuda. And then for Wahoo, in the tail. Um, unless you can shoot that thing in the head and kill it, shoot it in the tail and you're going to land your fish. Okay. So, yeah. Um, guys, keep your questions coming. How are you? What's your question? What is the snook migration run? Does anyone know? So, as far as I know, the snook breed up on the north coast, especially at Mopalan area, um, St. Lucia. So, it's got a lot to do with fresh water. Um, and it seems to be in the rainy seasons, there's a bigger migration of snook, and we get a lot more snook coming through. That's when we get those, what the guys call the snook smashes, when we get the big shoals coming past and guys fill up on quota. Um, we'll talk about that just now. But the snook migration is a thing. Um, that's why it's not a fantastic thing when guys go out to Mopalan and fill boats with 50, 60 snook because that's where the, the, the big female snook go and breed up in that like St. Lucia Mopalan area. That's why it's so famous for those big 10 kilo snook. So, um, yeah, how we, there's definitely a snook migration. Um, I don't know exactly. I'm not a scientist. I don't know when it happens. I don't know what the numbers are. All I know is sort of April, May, early June, 
we tend to get a lot of snook coming past the north coast down towards the south coast from up my, my pelon area so um it is a good time to be in the water i think We've had a lot of rain um, this summer. I think it's going to be a very good season for snook and kuda. And also this lockdown, as much as it sucks being at home, it's not a bad thing for the fish, giving them a bit of a break. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what you, if you guys agree with me, but I think it's going to be a good sort of winter season. All right, uh, so we've gone through basically where to shoot snook in terms of where in the body. Um, they are a soft fish. That's why they're so good eating. So... Once you put a spear into a fish, make sure you play it very gently. Um, yeah, and you should land your fish. So we've covered sort of where to find them, what gear to use. Like we said, high tide, early mornings. Um, what we haven't really gone into super depth, um, a big a deep depth into is the sort of once you get them on the deeper reefs. On the deeper reefs, they're a little bit more difficult to find because they can swim inshore or, or sort of offshore of where you are. The best place to look if you're taking a bit of a deeper swim is if you can find pinnacles on a reef. So if you've got a, a deeper reef of 18 meters average, if you can find a pinnacle that comes up to 14, 12 meters, that's normally a good place to look for the snook. They tend to like those sort of high points. They come onto those high points looking for, for bait. Even better is if you can find um, a sort of pinnacle ledge with some bait on it, um, little mozzies, uh, cigar scads, you're very likely to find stock in the area. Okay. So yeah, guys, it's not super technical. The nice thing about stock is you can find them in, in poor vis. You can find them in good vis. Um, the real newbie guys, the guys that have just started catching crayfish, they can shoot snook. That's the beauty about, about this fish. You don't have to be an expert. Um, the biggest piece of advice I can give you guys when hunting snook is it's not like a kuda. You can't chase after them. They don't like being chased. So most of the time when, it, when you see a snook, if you've got that fish in range, you need to take the shot. So there's no aiming for a long amount of time. They don't give you a long time to take the shot. They sort of come past at, at normally at quite a speed. And as soon as you kick up off the bottom after them, they tend to freak their tails and they're out of range. So... The, the best thing you can do is to be on the bottom facing in the right sort of general direction for that snook. As soon as the snook comes into view, um, as soon as he presents a good shot, take that shot, okay, and get your spear into that fish. You won't get a second chance at that fish. He's not going to turn and come look at you like a kuda does. You can't swim and sprint after him. If you swim and sprint after a snook, he's going to kick down and you probably won't see him again. If you don't have a good shot, it's best to relax back down to the bottom, let him go past. Most of the time, there'll be another fish behind him, especially if there's a shoal. If there's a big shoal of fish coming past you, especially if you've got a buddy diving with you, don't take the first fish that comes past you. Let a couple of them swim right past you, especially if you're on the bottom. Most of the time, they won't pay attention to you if you're hidden nicely. Let them swim past you. Your buddy's got a much better chance of also getting a fish. And it also gives you a chance to, to let one come nice and close to you. And also, um, you can pick a better fish out of the, out of the shoal. Okay, most of the time, the, the really big snook will be sort of in the middle of the shoal, um, even towards the back. The smaller, ratty ones will be in the front coming past, and the bigger ones will be a little bit further down, further back. So if you can give the smaller ones a chance to get back to your, where your buddy is, your buddy can shoot the small one, you can even normally get a spear into the big one behind that. Okay. One of the tactics also we often use when we're diving a point, especially if there's a few guys in the water, is you don't want to be swimming in front of each other. Um, a snook's going to swim on a specific line. So if you're all diving, like we did in the previous talk, if you're all diving in front of each other, only one guy is going to see that fish. If you're the guy in the front, awesome for you. If you're the two or three guys behind him, you're going to see fuck all. So the best thing to do is you want to sort of space out, space yourself out in a V. Um, with the lead guy being right in front, he can choose whatever line he wants to be on because he's the lead guy. Um, and then your buddies need to be sort of at a 45 degree angle going out behind you. And if there's one or two more extra guys, they can be inshore of you as well. The first guy, normally the shoal, we hit the first guy and split. As soon as the shoal splits, the guys inshore of you will get some fish and the guys offshore of you will also get a crack at the fish. But if you shoot the first fish in that shoal, what they're going to do is they're going to go straight offshore. Then the rest of the guys aren't going to see fish. So the clever thing to do is to let a few go past. You'll normally hear the guy behind you shoot, and as soon as he shoots, then you, you normally would have put your shot into your fish as well. 
Same as in the previous talk, let's not crowd spots out. So if you get to a point in the morning and there's really two guys in the order, swallow your pride, go find another spot. Especially with snook, they don't like a lot of bodies in the water. Okay, unless there's the smash and there's uh, bait fish in the water, you don't want to be more than two, three guys in a point. Um, it tends to chase, especially if there's a shoal doing laps around that point, which we'll get to now. But it, ch it, ch it will chase that shoal away, um, either to another spot or it will get them to go offshore. So one, two, maybe three people max on that spot. If there's other guys in the water that got there before you, tough luck, wake up early next time, go find another spot to dive. Same thing if there's guys that, um, if you're the first person on the point, um, you'd expect them to respect you to not come and dive and crowd you. Okay. Same thing, the unwritten rule on all shore dives is you never swim in front of another diver unless you've, you've asked his permission. That guy might be on a specific line where he's seen fish. If you go and keep swimming in front of him, you're cocking it up for everyone. So um, if you're going to be diving with someone else on a spot like that, make sure you respect everyone, give them their space. Most of the time, guys are guys are quite like a, once they've got a few fish, they'll tell you where the fish are swimming. Um, what we tend to do, uh, when, like especially Marcus and I, when we're diving together a lot, is we'll take turns being the lead diver. So if he's in front, he's got a fish, he'll normally move to the back, sort his fish out. If we sort his fish out, I'll move to the inside spot. I'll get a fish and we'll keep rotating like this, rather than trying to fight for pole position the whole time and eventually you're swimming each other off the reef. Okay. Ryan, do I use burly? Not for snook, um, especially not on a shore dive. You, one of the favorite predators of a snook is a, a blackfin shark. A blackfin cannot pass the snook up. So if you're burling, all you're going to be doing is calling the sharks, and snook don't respond fantastically well to burly as it is. Burly works for kuda, for wahoo, that sort of stuff. Um, you can do it on a shore dive, a lot of guys do, but especially on a boat dive. But if you're looking for snook, at most, I would use a small flasher. Those little Rob Allen capsule flashes are awesome um, for shore diving. They work really nicely for snook when inquisitive, but I wouldn't burly. The best thing for snook, in my opinion, especially if you're diving shallow on, on the sandy points on the north coast and the south coast, um, reef your, your float up, go find the line that you think they're swimming on, get your heart rate down, hit the bottom, and look up. And that's what you want to be doing in cycle. Go breathe up, hit the bottom, look up. That's the best way to get the snook to come close to you. You don't want to be swimming in and out, um, creating a lot of sort of surface area in the, in the water for the snook to see you. A lot of guys do shoot them on flashes. I'm not saying that they don't work. I'm just saying you have a lot more success lying on the bottom. Even with your flasher, if you're on the bottom, you've got a lot more chance of that snook coming close to you, coming to look at the flasher rather than you diving down onto him. If a snook is skittish, he's not going to come to your flasher. Um, and if you're swimming around the surface with your flasher, you're not doing anything productive. Okay. So my opinion is hit the bottom, look up, especially if the fizz is poor. So yeah, guys, um, I'm not going to go into massive detail. Any other questions, drop us a message. We can answer those quickly. Um, I don't know if I've missed anything. Um, what do you guys reckon, Ryan? You don't need crazy power when you're shooting snook. Um, you don't need to power up your rubbers. You don't need heavy spears. It's much better to use a gun that you can load quickly, a gun that you can shoot without recoil, that you can shoot uh, accurately. So like a 1-1 one -one with an 18 mil band, a 7 mil spear that's easy to load, easy to use is money. Um, a short little 90 roller with a 14 mil rubber, even a 16 mil rubber, but not super tight, hundreds. Uh, Jonesy, best shot placement between the dorsal and the anal fin. Um, it's the most sort of margin for error to miss left, right, up or down. And it's also, it's got some sinew there that you don't uh, pull the spear out um, if the fish does run away. Favorite snook recipe, uh, you've got to do the fish tacos. A couple of panko crumbs, cut them into some, some blocks in a taco with some cabbage. Can't beat that, eh? But yeah, there you, there's no bad way to eat snooker. Uh, some of the best, best fish to eat. Homemade flashes. Yeah, if you've got one, if you want to make one, by all means, take one with you. Um, shore diving for snook, especially, you don't want to be swimming around a lot of drag because you're going to be swimming in and out of the surf. You're most likely going to have some craze with you. So um, that Rob Allen capsule flasher is pretty much spot on. Uh, if you don't use it, you just leave it on your float. 
It's very quick to undo the little capsule, let it down, you hook it onto your foot. And they tend to, excuse me, they love those little spinning things. If they're coming into a flasher that day, those spinning things are, are gold. So that's the best flasher, I would say, for snook. You want a, a small little flasher plate for snook. You don't want a massive, like, wahoo flasher or something. Most of the time, that'll only scare them away. Uh, you want grunting. I don't grunt much for, for snook. I like to be as stealthy as possible. So <clears throat> that normally means I'll be hiding myself in the reef, um, in a crack. Um, remember, you're not just going to be shooting snook when you're diving shallow. You'll be shooting things like pommies, um, brasher in winter. You'll be shooting, um, what do you call them, stumpies. So you want to be hiding yourself as much as possible. Grunting, some guys do it, some guys don't. I'm not a grunter, to be honest. Um, I'll grunt at bottom fish, but I, I won't grunt at, at game fish. I know some guys will twang their rubbers, that sort of things. I've had, I've had experience where it's actually chased fish away rather than pulled them in close. I'd rather leave that fish alone completely. If I don't take a shot, I don't want him to know I'm there. Often with snook, especially if the shoals are coming through, they'll do laps around a, a spot. Especially if you're diving on a, a, a sort of a, a bommy or a pinnacle, those fish will be swimming a big lap. So if you see the shoal coming past, if you don't take a fish, at, uh, don't take a shot at that fish. You don't. They don't. Don't know that you're there. Most of the time, they'll come around again, and then you can get that shot. So I don't like grunting them. To be to be completely honest. Um, Howie, we've done three talks. You can check up on the, I think they're on the YouTube um, channel, so you can follow the previous talks. I've, I've done a boat talk and I've done a shore dive talk. We're going to be doing another one in a couple of days on Kuda and another one on Friday on Wahoo. So, yeah, uh, give us a follow, subscribe to the channel and put reminders on, and then as soon as we do a talk, it'll flash up that there's a talk. All right. No, Ryan, I haven't played Hunter Grant. I've been happily married for six months or six years. Fuck me, my wife's going to kill me. Um, so, no, no more Hunter Grant. Steve, when I'm talking about diving shallow, so diving shallow can be anything from three meters, sort of behind back line, to sort of six to eight meters. Some of the points will be much deeper. Some of the points on the south coast will be 10 meters. But I'm talking about shallow, I'm talking about um, the points, the sort of. Um, sort of point areas, rip areas, um, the sort of shallow reefs uh, close to shore. When I'm talking about further offshore, I'm talking about the deeper reefs, the sort of 10 to 18 to 20 meter reefs. Um, so shallow is everything sort of inshore. So if you think about shallow, you, you normally think about where you would be pulling your, your bugs close to, close to back line. Um, especially early in the morning on high tide, the snook will come really shallow, like close to back line. Um, so if you can find a good reef that's that's close to the, the back breakers, especially if you can find a good point. Points are fantastic places for snook because they've got um, rips coming out and snook like to feed on those rips. So if you can position yourself on the edge of that rip, because normally it's dirty in the rip, you want to position yourself at the edge of the rip where that, that warm water is meeting, that cold water, the snook will sort of tend to swim on that, so that sort of line. All right. Best way to string your snook. Um, Snook, kuda, wahoo, anything with teeth, there's only one way to string that fish. Um, and, uh, and I'll tell you now why I say this. Is you take your, your, your what do you call it, stringer pin, and you put it into the top jaw and out the bottom jaw so that you close the snook's mouth. You don't want to be putting the stringer through the eyes. You don't want to be putting the stringer through the gills. Um, if you're putting the stringer through the eyes or through the gills, the snook's mouth is going to be open. So what happens then, I've seen it happen before, is when you're swimming through surf, Guys that have strung their fish with the mouth open, snookers have actually cut the float line off, and you've, the, the guys have lost the entire floats, stringers, everything. Okay, so you want to be closing that fish's mouth as much as possible. So what I do is um, I put the stringer from the top jaw, uh, push it in, I wiggle it a bit to make a bit of a hole, I knock the back of it lightly, push it through into the bottom jaw, and then pull it through. Then I take the stringer and I clip it back onto my shark clip and I pull it nice and short. And then what that does um, is it, it closes the mouth of the snook. Then I take the excess line with that stringer pin and I push it back into my float, okay? What it does is it also keeps the, the snook right up near the surface so it's not hanging down further down past your float. 
The further down it hangs, the easier it is for the sharks to see and for the sharks to get. Remember, sharks are also, they, they're shitty things. They get intimidated very easily. So if that fish is close to your float, the shark's must, much less likely to have a go at it than if it's lying further down um, midwater, if you know what I'm saying, if your stringer is long. So, yeah, in the top jaw, out the bottom jaw, I put it back onto my shark clip and I pull it tight. And then as soon as you get another snook, you can do the same, just unclip it, pull it tight again so that you're keeping all of their mouths nice and closed. Also, remember, if you're swimming through a big surf, you don't want teeth everywhere because if that float gets knocked close to you, it can hurt you. It can injure you. Okay. Um, you want to keep their mouths as closed as possible. Right. If that answers your question. Yeah. Buck got 15 stitches. I've been bitten by a snook before, stringing it. Uh, it's not lacquer. You want to close that fish's mouth as quickly as possible. Also, as soon as he closes his mouth, he tends to bleed less as well because there's less water going to his gills. Um, so you're calling less sharks. That's my theory anyway. Yeah, the teeth definitely damage your wetsuit. So, yeah, get his mouth closed. Same thing for Kuda. Um, I know, personally know a guy that had his Achilles tendon bitten off by a Kuda. You don't want to take the chance. As soon as you can, you close his mouth. It's also a lot more area or hydrodynamic when you're pulling that, that fish through the water when you're swimming. If their mouths are closed, they pull a lot easier. Okay. Do I bleed my snook? Um, no, I don't. To be completely honest, most of the time I'm so preoccupied with getting another one on my stringer that I don't cut anything and also um, if there's a lot of snook in the area you most likely going to have a black fin or two in the area and as and, and probably zambies too so the more blood there is in the water the more chance of the, the sharks finding your catch so because i tend to reef hook my fish and i leave my fish a little bit further away from me i don't bleed my fish no um i normally cut them when i hit the beach and they've got time to bleed because we spear fishermen, we put a hole through our fish, so they tend to bleed a bit more than if you just had to catch them on a hook and line. So they taste the same to me, to be completely honest. Okay, boys, um, tapped out. Um, beyond benefits of bleeding a stock, guys uh, tend to think that, that fish taste a lot better if you bleed them. Well, they do. But... Um, like I said, if you're shooting a hole through a snook, most of the time it's bleeding a lot while you're fighting it anyway. So a lot of that blood's getting out. Um, dories, when I'm catching dories in the boat or from the fads and stuff, then definitely I, I do bleed them. Um, they, 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 they tend to freeze a lot better if you bleed your fish. Most of the time I don't freeze my fish. I, I eat them that same night or a few nights after that. So bleeding them or not, I, I personally don't do it. If you're going to be freezing your catch or keeping your catch, then yeah, I would do them. Okay, guys, I'm going to log off. Uh, feel free to drop us a message if you've got any more questions. We'll answer those for you. Uh, I don't have any more tips and tricks right now. I'm pretty tapped out. Lockout's got, got, me, got me down. But yeah, um, if you guys got any suggestions for future talks, get in touch either on the Facebook page or, or message us. And then we'll do a talk on one of those topics. It won't necessarily be me. We might get someone else that's that's expert at that. But yeah, I mean, we, we're happy to keep doing these talks. Eh? So yeah, keep logging on and we'll keep doing them. Subscribe. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get the notices that we're doing the talks. So yeah, keep doing that. Okay, Laka boys, have a good evening. Thanks for tuning in. We'll chat to you guys, chat to you guys soon. Eh?